Well, welcome. Uh, my name's David Wicks, and I'm chair of the board of a new organization called Pain Hollow on the Ohio. Uh, and October 15th, we uh, purchased Pain Hollow, and we did all the formal paperwork. Uh, uh, we had a wonderful law firm named Frost, Brown, and Todd who did all of our pro bono work in getting us to be established as a not-for-profit organization, uh, and then to do the uh, negotiation uh, with Paul Hassefurter uh, and his power of attorney. And we could talk about that at greater length if anybody is interested in the specifics of our organization. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it as I go through. I just wanted to start off, I'm a, uh, a, I'm a fan of the Ohio River and my PowerPoint, one of the things I was asked to do today was to say, who am I and how did I end up with, in this position? So uh, that's part of my little talk and sort of who else is involved in it? Uh, and then some of our ideas for the property. Uh, uh, we're still in our very early stages. Uh, uh, and, you know, we uh, had, had an uh, initial objective was to really purchase it. Uh, uh, Mr. Hasselfurter was ill, and uh, there was a fear that he might pass on and has relationships and, you know, a variety of family members that uh, did not want to assume responsibility for the property. Uh, and so we were, uh, you know, we were going to sort of first do all of our due diligence and uh, raise all of our money for the program and figure out exactly what we were going to do. Uh, <coughs> and it came to pass that we should buy it first. Uh, uh, and so uh, we did. Uh, and we're in that process now. And uh, through, t you know, in the next hour, I'll sort of describe what we're going to try to do over this next 12 months. Uh, we've sort of made a decision to have different phases, and so we're in this restoration phase now. Uh, but really, it is about the preservation of uh, the property, uh, uh, both ecologically and you know historically, and the, uh, the legacy of the Hubbards for sure, and what they can teach us today. Uh, but it's also about the Ohio River, uh, and that's how I ended up really getting involved in it. Uh, and so I just, you know, that's why I, you know, I love the books, don't get me wrong, uh, uh, but I think the, the OEO books, which unfortunately are out of print right now, uh, Jonathan Green, who is a book publisher in Frankfurt, or in Frankfurt, Kentucky, and he's going through the process of, he has lots of volume two and three, but not volume one. And uh, this comes out of, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ohio Crew, uh, there, up there by Antioch, and it just really pulled together a variety of authors uh, uh, that focused on the river. Uh, and Mr. Hubbard did all of the illustrations for it. Uh, and so uh, fascinating stuff up there at Antioch. Uh, they have a lot of their woodcuts up there, so all these originals are part of Antioch. Uh, but the first uh, uh, chapter, you know, and they're really what they are is just, you know, uh, 10 page sort of views of the river, and he goes, uh, to build my own boat on the river shore and drift down the Ohio. A river tugs at whatever is within reach, trying to set it afloat and carry it downstream. Living trees are undermined and washed away. No piece of driftwood is safe. Through stranded up on the high banks, the river will rise to it and will away it will go. Uh, the river extends this power of drawing all things with even the imagination to those who live on the banks, who can long watch the ceaseless lapsing of the river current without convincing a desire to set himself adrift, and like the driftwood which glides past, float with this dream clear to a final ocean. With me, the attraction of the flowing water goes back as, I, as far as I can remember. My river is the Ohio. So you really sort of try to think about, you know, one of the fascinating deals that we have is Mr. Hasselfurter never cleaned out the buildings. Um, and so all of Mr. Hubbard's books are still there. And so one of them that we found, which is a favorite one of mine, <coughs> is this guy, Mr. He's from my company, he's not. Uh, we have an archivist uh, who, who runs the Derby Museum. And she works at the Bilson Club in Louisville. Mm -hmm. And so these artifacts, they don't disappear, but 
they get arc five. Uh, and so, <laughs> I'm not the historian, by the way. Uh, anyway, the, these two, uh, this one especially, this, this guy, Holland C. Holland, uh, and during World War II, uh, became convinced that kids were geographically illiterate, uh, that they couldn't read maps, uh, and I'm glad he wasn't alive today, because uh, you know I, I, I worked for the public school system for 30 years in Louisville, and geography is not a uh, high point of our country. So you know, no one in Indiana is there. You know, you know, does the Ohio really go by Chicago? Uh, you know, and so I don't know what it's like here in Trimble County, but the average kid in Louisville is not geographically literate. And so these books, uh, 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 he, he sort of is an interdisciplinary guy, and he writes about the Mississippi River, and it basically looks at the history with woodcuts uh, and a journal from a turtle going from Minneapolis down to many, uh, down to the Ohio, or down to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, this one, Paddle to the Sea, uh, he goes, and it's a little Indian boy who carves his own boat, throws it into a little river, and goes into the Great Lakes, and ends up in uh, the Atlantic Ocean. And it travels along, and it tells the history, it tells the ecology, and so it just, you know, what we try to think about is where did Mr. Hubbard get these ideas? You know, uh, I, I, I do believe that uh, he was a creative guy. Uh, that's the given. But what influences got him and Anna uh, really going through? And so analyzing all of his readings is just one part of it, or all of our music. So we have, we found almost 700 music uh, uh, you know, portfolios scattered around in the buildings. So we compile them all together. Now a musician, you know, actually the Louisville Orchestra is gonna take them and sort of think about how did music influence their life. So just fascinating stuff. If we could, uh, where's the lights? Just that, yeah, right there. Well, yeah. So, uh, uh, Thank you. you know, I, I'm a New Yorker. I uh, taught school in New York City, ran summer camps in New York City, uh, and Louisville had an integration problem. And uh, during busing 1979, they hired Colorado Outward Bound to come in and work with racially violent youth. Uh, uh, that was part of our integration system. Uh, uh, and we took kids all over Kentucky. All over, actually, we went up to the Great Lakes and went sailing. We did all sorts of stuff with them. And I did it for 30 years. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we got involved. Oh, here. Let's see if I can do this, too. I got involved in Black Acre State Nature Preserve, the first nature preserve in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, uh, dedicated in 1979. A man named Judge Macaulay Smith uh, donated the property, and uh, the school system ran it. And along with my kids who graduated from the Outward Bound program, we ran the oldest working farm in the state of Kentucky, the oldest continuous working farm built, 1790. Uh, and now it's a nature preserve. And so I interacted with the state nature preserve system extensively. Uh, and so how we think about land conservation along our rivers and watersheds, I believe is part of uh, the mission of Payne College. Uh, oh, wrong way. Uh, so I worked for the school system, ran Black Acre State Nature Preserve for uh, 30 years. I retired, uh, and we opened up a beautiful center on Louisville's waterfront, and we have uh, four of these uh, big Voyager canoes, and we have a place downtown on the waterfront, which probably has 150 boats that people can take, uh, you know, $120 a year, and they get a pass and keep their boat down there and go paddling or rowing or whatever they want to do. We do a lot of educational programs, about 3,000 kids a year, uh, and they all do service projects. So these guys here, like, and if people want to take them out, these are all written by high school kids. And sort of looking at 
uh, the ecology of the area, trying to get kids thinking about plants, thinking about animals uh, in our urban setting. Uh, and, and so uh, from our base in Louisville, it turns out folks in Cincinnati were doing the same thing. So they have a paddle fest in Cincinnati, the largest paddle fest in North America, actually, where people go out on the river. So we got together and uh, started to say, how can we work with all these different towns to think about outdoor recreation and to think about a relationship with the river that is not commercially oriented, you know, is not, uh, uh, it's that experience, it's that experience that Mr. Hubbard had early, early on, the 1920s, floating in a canoe, wondering what's around the corner. Uh, and so we have our whole elected official summit, and I have our last brochure up here, but you know, more than our fair share, every mayor uh, uh, and most county judges who we're working with came together and had a leadership summit. And we've done now three of these, and the National Park Service is bought in. And so we work with the National Park Service and all of the elected mayors to think through that recreational uh, piece and both museum-wise, but also fishing and access. And so we've raised almost $7 million for, because these boat ramps are expensive. We put one in Louisville, or well, it's, we didn't, we advocated for it because we're just advocates. Uh, but Fish and Wildlife spent almost a million dollars down in Louisville in Shawnee Park putting the boat ramp in. We have now nine new boat ramps from Portsmouth on down. And so, you know, what we really try to do is to sort of think about this adventure and how a vibrant Ohio River can really help with that whole process. And so we go from Portsmouth on down to Vanceburg. Vanceburg just got this beautiful showboat Majestic, which used to be in Cincinnati, then it was in Aurora, then it was in New Richmond, and now it's gonna be in Vanceburg. Uh, uh, and, you know, Maysville's the same deal, you know, Maysville's. So they're putting significant dollars. Uh, and Augusta, they say it's the prettiest town. We do trips and we paddle on down in these big Voyager canoes, and Rosemary Clooney House is one of our sponsors, and the Beehive Tavern. So we camp at each one of these places and uh, uh, meet with all the <coughs> folks in New Richmond and Cincinnati, of course, and, you know, that whole northern Kentucky, uh, just goes Rising Sun and VV. You know, right across from, uh, you know, Madison, you know, is, uh, uh, you know, just different counties. So we really work hard to, 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 to not necessarily do it for people, but to really bring money to folks uh, down in Westport uh, and, of course, Louisville. Uh, uh, and part of it is money. Uh, and so this is my last two, two last slides on, on or I hop into Pain Hollow. But when we look at it, we're really, uh, we look at recreational trails in the Ohio Riverway counties. So, you know, Ohio spent 32 million. Down here in the Ohio River, they only spent 1 million. Uh, uh, and Kentucky is 2 million out of 22 million. And we say the Ohio River is more important than that. Uh, uh, and so let's figure out how to uh, uh, highlight that. It's the same thing with federal. Uh, uh, when we look at they, you know, there's a thing called dedicated or geographic ecological restoration funding. Uh, uh, you know, Great Lakes gets a lot of money, Lake Champlain all the way around. Ohio River Basin gets zero. Uh, and so as we think about this land conservation pieces, uh, uh, it takes money. Uh, 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 you know, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife has a fascinating deal called the Islands in the Ohio River National Wildlife Refuge, and it stops. and Maysville, uh, uh, it doesn't, you know, they just stopped buying islands. Uh, and so uh, uh, we say it's just as important as the Los Angeles River. We say it's just as important as uh, uh, that. So when we start to think about Pain Hollow, that's how we really actually got involved in it. Uh, uh, I've been taking these trips for many years, and so I've known Paul, and we would stop and talk about the Hubbards. And I teach at the University of Louisville, uh, and so we have, you know, the Hubbard material all embedded in it, and we'll show you some of the work at the end that U of L has done with in relationship to that. But uh, so uh, you know, most people here probably know more about the Hubbards than I do. Uh, uh, but you know, we think not only the, the art uh, uh, and the literature 
uh, it, but it's a way of life, you know, it's an Ohio River way of life. And certainly not everybody, uh, uh, matter of fact, I imagine most people uh, aren't going to live without electricity, uh, aren't going to live without uh, running water. Uh, uh, but it's surprising the number of people who should, I believe, think more about their energy use. Uh, and so as I said, you know, our goals are, and we did buy it, uh, and we're now in this process of cataloging all the material that we have. Uh, part of it is, as we think through, uh, 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 the stuff. It's amazing people who have material who are coming forward. Uh, uh, the, the gentleman who restored Mr. Hubbard's uh, violins and violas in Lexington came forward. He had two of his violins he donated. <coughs> uh, uh, and so we're, we're accumulating, you know, a fair amount of material uh, uh, that helps describe uh, his uh, process of, you know, developing not only Pain Hollow but his lifestyle. Uh, <coughs> we are going through that whole process of the historic registry, uh, so that's one of our pieces that just takes forever uh, uh, because, you know, you get Frankfurt in, uh, involved with the Kentucky Historical Society. We want to make sure that you know, the land is protected ecologically, but also uh, uh, as we go th forward with the restoration, uh, that it meets all those historic standards. Uh, one of the pieces that I found out that I was quite surprised at is there's a tax exempt, or there is, there's tax credits. So if we go through this process, get designated as a historic property, get approved by the Kentucky Historical <coughs> Society, then if a bank needs to put some money in for a tax credit someplace else, they can give it to us. Uh, 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 and so it underwrites part of the restoration that we wish to do with it. Uh, uh, you know, the, the piece as we go forward, you know, uh, as, as, as we go forward uh, to think about uh, what the place could be, we, we sort of put it into a couple different categories. You know, we're fascinated with the ecological preservation, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, uh, there is adjacent landowners, for sure, who have an interest in thinking about the forest health, and is there a way that uh, 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 Payne Hollow can help with that whole process? Uh, uh, we're certainly very much into that. Uh, the stream that goes through the property uh, is currently dry, you know, and so it's just interesting to look at the hydrology uh, uh, that, that, that feeds some of these uh, tributaries to the Ohio River. And Payne Hollow is not unique, you know, the tributaries up and down the entire Ohio River. You know, we work a lot with this perception of the river, and the bottom line is it meets recreational standards, you know, 98% of the time. You know, the Ohio River is cleaner today than it has been in almost 150 years. Uh, but the tributaries are not. Uh, 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 and so when you think about the tributaries, the tributary that goes through Payne Hollow is almost self-contained. Uh, uh, and so it's almost a model stream that you can compare other streams to. So as you're down the road, think about uh, uh, what, a, what a natural stream could be. I work a lot with a, a big research forest in Louisville called Fernheim. Uh, uh, and they have a reference breach, that's what they call it, uh, and one stream in the middle of Bernheim is their model of what it could be, uh, you know, because there's all sorts of influences on streams, not all right local, but so if you have a comparison. Uh, uh, then education, you know, as we sort of think through this educational piece, um, you know, we have some big issues. It hasn't been maintained in a long time. The trails are in very bad shape. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, Lee's Landing, which was the traditional place where, where Mr. Hubbard would row his boat across and, and have a car parked there. That's been purchased by somebody else, uh, which is, you know, it's their property. Uh, uh, we have some nice agreements with folks up there in Hanover Beach and have had relationships where we use their uh, pontoon boats and. We've taken out 175 bags of garbage, uh, uh, and so Mr. Hasselfurter, uh, who you know was ill at the end, 
had and visited. Uh, part of it was his, I imagine. I, you know, we don't know where it all came from, but you know, and there probably still is another 150 bags of garbage to pick up. Uh, 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 you know, that floats them from the river, a lot of it. Uh, uh, but then it's the houses themselves. Uh, and so there's a lot of work to go, you know, even restroom facilities. Uh, uh, and so, you know, one of the intent is we're working with the UK School of Architecture and they're doing a landscape plan of where bathrooms could go. Uh, and so that process of, you know, the next two years uh, uh, is really about money and making this place safe and because uh, right now it's not. Uh, uh, and it's really under renovation. So our education, you know, it sort of says off-site, uh, and so we're doing programs like this because what it really is is about stories and finding people who have connections uh, and who are interested in that whole process of thinking about that interdisciplinary approach to understanding the Ohio River and that role art plays. We call it the confluence of art, culture, and the environment along our waterways. Uh, uh, and so, you know, one of the interesting things is, you know, we there's a couple pieces of adjacent property to us, uh, which well, we'll talk about it a bit. One of them is 39 acres uh, for sale right now, uh, uh, and Payne Hollow is 61 acres. So you add the two of them together and it's uh, 100 acres. And guess what? Winnie the Pooh had the 100 acre wood. Um, yes, he did. <laughs> which was really uh, watercolors and creative writing. Uh, and so it's another sort of approach to thinking about our, our piece. You know, and then sort of that whole creative expression piece, you know, which I, I go, you know, you can go down a rabbit hole with this one for a long, long time, because most people think about Mr. Hubbard from the artistic point of view, but he knew the plants and the animals. He was a sustainable guy. Uh, uh, and so when, we, when one thinks about what the future could be for the property, is it relationships for an artist in residence, which makes total sense, you know, and to having people use it to, to spend a month and to sort of live off the grid and uh, create? Uh, or is it a writer? Uh, uh, or is it a research piece that lo really looks at, you know, the insects? We just had a, uh, a professor from Hanover who was very interested in uh, just insect life. Would love to. Hanover was so involved with Payne Hollow for many years, and and just didn't have a great relationship with Mr. Hasfurter, uh, uh, and so they didn't. So now Hanover is really, and they're right across the river. So it sort of makes sense in a lot of ways to really develop that relationship. Uh, uh, the same thing goes with U of L. So I'm teaching a course next semester or in the spring of the fall of 2023 uh, uh, that will be more about creating sort of an ecological database of trying to, you know, get all of the plants and all of the animals and identify those significant ecological areas of the, of the site. So this goes right back into our, our stewardship. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, I just love Mr. Hubbard's quotes that, you know, may it long remain as it is, not merely for our selfish enjoyment, but for the satisfaction it must give many people to know that there is such a place. A few wild pockets are left along the river these days. Uh, uh, you know, so really from, since, from Louisville to Cincinnati, you know, as I said, I worked with the Nature Preserves Commission, and uh, 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 there is no nature preserve along the Ohio River. Uh, uh, to sort of understand that riparian area. You know, and so it's not only about protecting a, a landscape, like for an example, they protected Jesse Stewart Nature Preserve, which is a wonderful, wonderful piece, but it protects the houses, it protects that whole piece, and so we're sort of trying to think about that process of down the road, what is the best use for it? Is it really a facility like Jesse Stewart Nature Preserve where the state protects, you know, above and beyond the, the biodiversity of the place uh, uh, and have it open, dawn to dusk, and they help pay for it. Uh, I, 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 that's one pathway down the road. Uh, uh, you know, but it, it, it's getting people involved in this ecological restoration and exploring partnerships 
we do have a uh, NSF grant from the National Science Foundation for this summer to hire four uh, 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 you know, undergraduates or graduates to spend, uh, uh, well, they're going to spend probably two days a week on the property over the summer and doing this ecological uh, uh, baseline data work and at the same time creating what they call a GIS database which would allow us to produce our maps and to really think about that long term. So uh, uh, that application period is open so if you know of any uh, young person that has an interest in uh, uh, sort of an interdisciplinary approach, uh, we'd love to get some <coughs> folks from Trimble County actively engaged as part of U of L's purpose is U of L says it's not only an urban institution, it serves the state of Kentucky uh, just like UK does, but I think not everybody agrees with that totally. But UK, <laughs> U of L is interested in reaching out to uh, uh, think through about these things. Uh, uh, you know, and so when we look at this education and outreach, I did talk a little bit about that. Uh, you know, one of the things uh, this past uh, week, uh, we spent a lot of time with a brand new archaeological institute that focuses on Native Americans, Revolutionary and Civil War era digs open in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Uh, and so the Archaeological Institute of the Ohio River uh, uh, will help us sort of think through, because the place, you know, Payne's Landing Road, which is our easement into the property, you know, it, it was a historic place. So as you go down on Payne Hollow itself, two other, you know, probably 1830 foundations are there. Uh, 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 you know, a beautiful ice house that's still there. Uh, and so we want to paint that picture of how it fits in. And then as we look on down, this is a, this, this is a hunting app if, you, if anybody is a hunter. This is called Onyx. Uh, and, it, and it gives approximate, you know, you know this is not legal, uh, 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 but it gives approximate boundaries of property boundaries. Uh, uh, and so you can sort of see Payne Hollow up on the top and that little blue line, that, that's, you know, our easement that goes on through. And then what fascinates us, and we look forward to working with the historic uh, uh, Preston Plantation, uh, you know, that's right adjacent to us. Uh, uh, and, 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 you know, we have not been introduced to all those. We've certainly done our research on it, but looking forward to developing processes. The Trimble County Generating Plant is another fascinating neighbor. Uh, 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 we have, you know, interestingly, Thomas More University, which I'm a big fan of. They run the largest ecological research station on the Ohio River one of the abandoned U.S. Army Corps lockhouses. You know, there used to be 52 of these lockhouses up and down the river. Well, Thomas More uh, pays for their entire outreach and research on the river from electrical power companies because they all have to do research uh, and they contract with contractors to do how many, you know, what's the impact on fish, what's the water quality, what's the air quality. And so Thomas More has figured out a way to have be an entrepreneur uh, and have uh, these folks and, and Duke, who runs theirs, likes it because it helps with the STEM training for on and on and on. So is that a possibility with, uh, with, with that whole Trinidad County? You know, we're talking one of, uh, there's another uh, 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 fairly large landowner, Dace Brown Stubbs and King Stubbs, uh, uh, and they have about 1,200. Uh, uh, right adjacent to uh, the Preston Plantation. Uh, you know, not totally, you know, there's lots of landowners there. So how we can think of in a regional approach uh, uh, for this, not only land monitoring, so we have the, uh, the Nature Preserves Commission uh, has donated their time to do our first plant survey. So we have 133 different plants on the property. Uh, and they're doing sort of the invasive species work and all of it. But the interesting thing we found out is that one of the highest concentrations of edible and medicinal plants are on the property. Uh, and so their thought is the Hubbards nurtured it uh, 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 because that was part of their whole deal. So as we think through in a regional approach, how all that really 
uh, uh, can, 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 can change. Uh, you know, and it comes down to the creative, exp you know, you know, that's what many people are about. They, 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 they're just fascinated with this uh, interpretation of the natural and cultural world through art. I, 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 and so working with uh, certainly UK Press, uh, uh, Jessica Whitehead has uh, uh, helped publish the, the recent watercolors of Mr. Hubbard. She's working on a biography of Mr. Hubbard for UK Press. Uh, but so we're just looking for these partnerships and I'll talk just a little bit more about those partnerships but uh, that's our advisory board which you know, I'll go into in a second. Uh, and that's uh, uh, Payne Hollow. If we could just go to the website just uh, briefly and then and then go to uh, maybe about is this and scroll on down and scroll down to the bottom. Keep on going. So perfect. So we, uh, what you just zipped through there was all of our goals. But uh, 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 oops, Sorry. something happened. <laughs> there we are. Uh, but that's me. You've heard about who, who I am. Uh, but uh, uh, Jessica, uh, she's the archivist for the Derby Museum and a Filson Club fellow, and so she takes care of all of that. Ted uh, is a radiologist who's a collector. And he happens to have the largest collection of Hubbard-related material, uh, you know, uh, in his house. He built a beautiful home overlooking the Ohio River in '97, watercolors and 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 uh, uh, back to 1922, uh, uh, watercolors and uh, 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 woodcuts, just just beautiful. Uh, uh, he he, uh, Bob Canada is a good friend, and so they go back and forth. And, Bob thought he had the largest, and it turned out Ted is way <laughs> over. Uh, Joe is a uh, filmmaker who uh, uh, ha has an interesting job. Uh, he, you know, he's an artist and he is a videographer, but what his job is is he's product placement, but for land. So when Nike wants to do a commercial, he goes out in the United States and says, "This is a good place," uh, uh, and pitches it. And so he's, uh, you know. A, a site developer or site something for, for these PR folks. Uh, and so that we have a very small board. We are looking at expanding at some time, if you scroll down a little bit more. Uh, and then we have our uh, advisors, and we just sort of click through it. Ed, Ed, Ed has helped preserve more land in the Commonwealth of Kentucky than anybody. He, he worked with a group called Kentucky Natural Lands Trust, they bought almost 90,000 acres in southeastern Kentucky. So he's large landscape, you know, a, pra a pro property appraiser, retired. Uh, Mr. Bagley was a, uh, 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 with the U of L School of Fine Arts, uh, and then he ran uh, the Kentucky Water Tower, or, you know, the Louisville Water Tower mm -hmm. downtown Louisville. Mm -hmm. So he was their director when it was the Louisville Visual Arts. Of course, everybody knows Bob. Uh, Canada. Uh, uh, Jennifer is uh, with Hanover, and she's their archivist with uh, Hanover. Uh, John Fedick is uh, used to be a Hanover fundraiser, uh, and probably is one of the country's best Hubbard people. If you could sit <coughs> there and then sort of see that little button. No, 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 no. Oh, oh. Oops. Not one that one. You have to go back to about us. The second bullet. There you go. Click it. There you go. The little arrow. There you go. Gordon Garner was head of the Metropolitan Sewer District in Louisville and is our, is our long-range planner. So is sort of helping us think through uh, that. Uh, next one, we'll just keep on going through these. Uh, Bob Hill wrote a wonderful article for the Courier Journal, just got published. So he's a long time sort of, uh, you know, cultural critic, I guess you could call Bob. Uh, Chuck <laughs> Keller, you know, he is uh, chair of the uh, Fort Thomas Forest Conservancy. So Mr. Hubbard, right, 1920s, built a home for his mother and built the, the art studio behind it up there in Fort Thomas. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Keller is chair of the board uh, uh, of the folks who own that. And they have an artist in residence and they would love to work with us. Uh, Alexander uh, McIntosh, she's a, 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 a writer but also another artist. And keep on going, we'll see if we've got it. 
uh, Frances Renon. She Frances is uh, with Frost Brown and Todd, so is our sort of money person. So we just like her. Uh, <laughs> Peter Morin was uh, head of the Speed Art Museum, so he uh, is uh, you know one of these art lovers. And John Nation, uh, photographer, uh, with the Louisville Magazine. And Mose Putney is an architect uh, who is a historic ar architect We're down there. And Elizabeth is, uh, was supposed to be here today, but is sick. Uh, uh, and Elizabeth is our educator and uh, another art enthusiast. We've also added a couple other folks with Barringer Crawford. Uh, you know, so the director of Barringer Crawford, here's an interesting story. Her grandfather ran a sawmill that Mr. Hubbard bought all the material build his two houses from. So here now she's head of Barringer Crawford Museum. Uh, 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 and so it's just wonderful. So as we try to think through these relationships, because you know when you think of Hanover or the University of Kentucky, the University of Louisville, uh, uh, Thomas More, Northern Kentucky University, uh, Barringer Crawford, all have stakes, all have exhibits around Mr. Hubbard. Uh, 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 and how can we be a collaborative institute that, that supports all of them? Uh, one final thing, and let's, uh, why don't you click out of this, maybe a U of L piece right up here. So when I, uh, I'm just fascinated with all of our uh, uh, resources, you know, so you have more than your fair share of printed books and, 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 and art, but uh, uh, just as we found a letter, no, it's just fascinating to see all these letters, you know, and artifacts from them. So we love to get copies of those, and that's what Jennifer is out to do. And, and uh, Hanover, as a, she's the director of curatorial stuff for the library. Uh, but uh, there was a woman who we worked with, Joanne Weeder, and she went and talked with uh, Mr. Hubbard after Miss Hubbard died uh, and recorded about 20 hours of interviews. And so they've transcribed them. Uh, and put them all on here, so we're all. So you go to childhood or art, or so it's all. You, you can listen to his voice, uh, uh, and so it's just a neat thing to go down to, uh, 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 you know, sit on the banks of the Ohio River and sit on a boat and listen to Mr. Hubbard talk about what he does and why he does it, and, and uh, uh, try to get into the spirit of it. You know, we're not going to replicate what Mr. Hubbard is, but we just sort of want to monopolize, not monopolize, just take advantage of it and have us think through uh, uh, our relationship a little bit more with uh, the river. I've talked a fair amount. Uh, 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 would love to answer any questions or have, if anybody has any thoughts or what we could do to really make this a, a, a permanent facility in Trimble County that honors the river. Uh, 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 you know, it's going to be a small place. That's the bottom line. You know, it's not right now. We have room for four cars. That's it at the top of the hill. Uh, 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 you know, and so, you know, time will tell how that infrastructure will change. Uh, uh, so we we aren't, you know, and as I said at the beginning, it's going to be another year and a half uh, before any really public programs on site will happen. Uh, uh, we're very much interested in working with people about the forest health, the ecological health, the stream health, uh, 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 the artifacts within the buildings. Uh, and as those pieces with the historical society and uh, too many architects, you know, said it, it's just a funny thing, you know. Here Mr. Hubbard, you know, built it by himself, you know. He lived on the fringe of society uh, 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 and he picked up stuff from the river uh, to build his house. Uh, now we go to uh, uh, you know, it's just sort of, it's a philosophical difference almost, uh, uh, but, you know, we hope to keep that spirit of, of uh, can-do and uh, uh, limit the bureaucracy uh, uh, in establishing this place. Yeah. I'm sure there's others that would like to volunteer to help when I you get into the, the, the same cleanup thing. process and uh, just wondering if, if you do need help on that. Yeah, there's, uh, 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 there's, there's, there's projects, like one of them, the art studio uh, uh, is sliding down the hill. Uh, uh, and so it's going to take somebody, you know, and 
you know, we don't want to bring in a Bob Kent, you know, we don't want to, you know, so it's going to take people with shovels uh, uh, and dig a little foundation on the top of the hill so it doesn't slide down the bathroom side of it. It is really collapsing. Uh, all these, you know, if you go on the website, we've taken all the photographs of, you know, our cleanup time so you can look at the condition of the buildings and things like that. So, you know, but you, what we wanted to do right now was to make the buildings secure and dry. You know, so our insurance basically came out, so we're fully insured through, through Barringer Crawford. Uh, uh, and so they just wanted to make sure that there's no more water getting in. We had a tremendous problem with raccoons. It just got into all the books and paper mills. It's just a shame, you know, it could have been for three or four years, you know, so it just wasn't taken care of. But that whole piece of thinking about volunteers to help us you know, is it from the river? So we worked with folks from Hanover, New, you know, Hanover Beach to, to have a boat to come on down. And there's still probably 125 bags of trash to pick up. Uh, uh, you know, and so you have, you know, and that's another piece with them wondering. Where did you take the trash? I, huh? Where did you take the trash? Uh, well, uh, we made an arrangement with a guy at Hanover Beach who had a big, <coughs> huge uh, trailer that was had sides on it. And his boat and then he brought it back up to uh, uh, Mr. Brothers, I think that's his name, it's about a mile and a half up on the Indiana side. Uh, and so he's allowed us to launch canoes or kayaks. And so we had our little trailer there, and made lots of trips. Uh, and you know, and those old chunky, you know, couches and stuff that we just brought in over the past little bit of time. Trying to strip out, and then they have, you know, it sounds like I'm talking poorly about this drawings, but they're wonderful. But, you know, a garbage pile with half open cans can be thrown out pretty easily. Uh, uh, um, you know, a rusty uh, uh, 55, there's probably 15, 55 gallon drums there that, you know, could have been used by Mr. Hubbard as part of his toilet system that, you know, because it's right below where the toilet were and so do we chuck them? You know? I say yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, so, I mean so, pull I mean pulling weeds on, on the trails. You know what I mean? Yeah. Getting the trails back you know, where you can walk down there and, and see what you used to be able to see. I mean that kind of thing. I, I can get down on my hands and knees and pull weeds and yeah, things or, like that. you know, or thinking about restoring the gardens, you know, yeah. of, of you know, that takes time and, and energy. And, you know, one of the pieces they found uh, were probably 150 seed packs oh. uh, 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 from Anna Hubbard. So they're all written on her script and everything else. Because she was, you know, we all like to think of Mr. Hubbard as the survivalist, but I think Anna did the gardens. Uh, and so they're now. So this, you know, or walking down the trails, you know, this past uh, this past fall, we probably had six pretty significant sized logs and trees fall over. Uh, and, you know, you just kind of get a chainsaw and you know, and just do that. Uh, uh, you know, and then you know, just as in the later days of Mr. Hubbard, where people would come and chop firewood for him. Uh, 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 you know, so as we think about the future of that building. You know, it's pretty much a consensus that it's not going to be a museum. Uh, uh, you know, well, it's, it's a or it's a house. Yeah, the house. So, building on their legacy of not using power, is there some alternative power source? Because obviously, with a residence or something that's going to be active, people mm -hmm. are going to want some. I don't know if solar would work down there, would it? Uh, well, there are you know places you can put a. Little yeah, solar portable. I'm just thinking thing. of not running wiring to the house specifically because of you know, or is it we seek people who want to be without electricity for a while? But you have you said you had running water down there, a creek. Uh, well, there so was there running, running water in the creek. The creek is now dry. Well, uh, so that uh, could be like a wind. Yeah, and there's a cistern. 
They, yeah. they, this is yeah. that needs to be rebuilt. All yeah. of the gutters are down. Yeah. Uh, and Mr. Hubbard actually had a system, yeah. right? And then had a, 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 the gutters, and then had an electric or a, a gas powered yeah. pump right. that pumped it to the top of the hill. And he then did that once a week until they had running water uh, right. by gravity. Uh, but is that, you know, so all those things right. are possible, you know? Or do we go after people who just say, uh, I don't want to have electricity, you know? I don't want to have phones. I was yeah. going to say, there's so many people wanting to come here and help and have ideas of what needs to be done. Is there like somebody that, instead of all trumping down, yeah. we should probably contact somebody? Yeah, there, there, there's, uh, so, so, so we have a, a, a set of committees of, you know, as every little not-for-profit organization does, <laughs> uh, uh, and we're all volunteer right now, and so, we do have a buildings and grounds committee that organizes almost all the well has organized all the cleanups and that's you know the architect and the Kentucky Historical Society who says what we can do. Uh, because uh, we don't want to pull up the wrong plants. Yeah, you don't want to pull up the wrong plants, you know, or, uh, uh, or you know, just as important I think is that you want to maximize volunteer time. So uh, uh, you know. Invasive species, you know, we've done that for a long time, and we could put people to work for honeysuckle forever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, and right. so are there? Let's, be, let's get a list of priorities. And so, uh, one of the things you were going to do was to create a list of sign up of who would like to be involved, and, and uh, with emails, and we can follow up, and just as long as people are patient and understand that, uh, uh, you know, it's winter time. Huh? I'm going to go to, I'm, is I'm the go ultimate to goal to try to get it designated a reserve for the, you said there was no preserve between Louisville and Cincinnati. Is that kind of uh, where we kind of tried the steps to get to? Well, we, 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 are, uh, 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 we are striving to keep our options open as much as we can. Okay. Uh, 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 and so we want to explore all those options. Uh, uh, you know, even down to the management of the place. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, we said early on, maybe our organization is here to preserve and secure and make sure the buildings aren't falling down and somebody else might do the program. Maybe Hanover's going to turn around and get the, or Barringer Crawford, who's interested in expand. Barringer Crawford's very interested in expanding to more of northern Kentucky and sort of have how the, is that going to be a regional museum instead of a, you know, a Covington museum? Uh, uh, so who knows what that future is? Uh, uh, or is it the Wendell Berry uh, uh, Institute there in Newcastle? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and so, you know, there's all those. Or is it us, Payne Hollow on the Ohio, maintaining it down the road? You know, and then it comes to land management. You know, the state of Kentucky has some very fascinating funding streams for natural areas. Uh, uh, and so could the Kentucky State Nature Preserves Commission through the Heritage Trust Fund mm -hmm. uh, uh, purchase the property and allow us to maintain it? We still own it, uh, uh, but they own the development rights. Mm -hmm. And so if they're willing to buy it from us, buy the development rights from us, we aren't going to plan on developing anything, at least right now. You know, and there's all sorts of, maybe we need to have a little bunkhouse someplace to have volunteers stay at, uh, uh, you know, or do we get a shanty boat and dock it right off the river and let people live on a shanty boat on the river when they work? Uh, uh, so, you know, there's all sorts of options. Have you tried to track that boat down? I know, he, I think he sold it uh, at the end of his journey. The shanty boat. Uh, yeah, I think it got I think it got sold and dismantled. It was dismantled. Uh, 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 but there are several. Uh, I just was yesterday. There's a wonderful man named Rinker Buck. I tried to get him to come today, but he left. And he just wrote a wonderful book called Life on the Mississippi, mm -hmm. uh, which is really dedicated to the Hubbards. Uh, and uh, I think in April the paperback comes out. Uh, it's called From Simon and Schuster. Uh, and he built a shanty boat and went to the same distance that Mr. Hubbard did, uh, except for he did it in one year instead of four years. Uh, and just a fascinating book. He wrote another one called Oregon Trail, 
And so if you sort of like interpretive histories, uh, uh, Winkler Buck, uh, uh, just a w wonderful guy. So we're, we're interested in all of that. There actually is another shanty boat. Uh, a, a, a crew built it this past fall and took a trip from, uh, from Frankfurt down the Kentucky River and oh. down uh, the Ohio to Louisville. Uh, uh, and they might be interested in donating their boat. So, uh, uh, you know, all those things, you know, we're a new organization saying we'd like to go forward. Uh, we are going forward uh, uh, to preserve the legacy of Mr. Hubbard and Anna Hubbard. And, and uh, uh, if there's a way, if you have a piece of paper that we can take down notes and, 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 and we'd love to. Do you, uh, in, the, in the main house, is the, is the original furniture still there? Yeah, so all of the original furniture is still there. The, the, uh, the Murphy beds are still there. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 all the drawers that he built, the little chairs that he built. The piano? Uh, uh, is the piano still there? Uh, the piano's not there. <gasps> No, the piano is not there. We did find, uh, 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 well, there were several people. I think the piano went before he passed. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he might have, because Yeah, and so I think after it. Anna died and before mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Hubbard passed, uh, I think the pan piano, and, and we don't you know. You found any music there. stands? Huh? Music the music stands, stands are there, uh, all of the music. So, okay. you know, we, over 500 portfolio pieces of music that they played. You know, I just said I had this picture, you know, when you sort of listen to these stories, you know, they had eight or nine songs they played. <laughs> it wasn't the case. <laughs> you know? Oh, no. His dad went, was in the Louisville Symphony Orchestra, and he would go down and he play. He'd take his horn down there. He'd take his horn down there, and Anna and uh, Harlan, and his dad would, pl his dad would play oh, together wonderful. down yeah. there. And, wow. and, that's, and I have the pictures of when they took the piano to Peyton Hollow. I have I have photographs of his grandfather and it took six men, from what I understand, to carry it down the hill to the once there. they got the wagon down. Once they got the, the wagon down. Get the mm -hmm. And so the I've got these pictures. I found them in a family Bible. Like this morning, like I said, I opened one of the books and the letter from oh, Harlan and Anna fell out of it. Right and before I, I came here, I so I brought Jessica, it here and they took the picture. Look at some mm -hmm. of the I emailed Jessica, she's going to come look at some of the things we have. Yeah, right. One direction. Well, well Jessica's the person, uh, yeah. Yeah, she said she'd be up in the first part of the year. Yeah. She has, uh, yeah. Yeah. there's some deal yeah. she has to do for the derby that they have. Oh, I'm sure it's some That's probably end of the year derby, 100 years of the derby. I thought they brought it in on the boat and they carried it. No, no, no. I've got pictures. They took it on the wagon. I've got the pictures of the the piano on the wagon. Because I've, oh. I've seen a picture of where they're carrying it and it looks like they're carrying it up the hill. So where's the house located on the property at? Uh, I mean, at Payne Hall? It's to the terrain. It looks like some really yeah, good yeah. terrain. It is. It is, uh, it is uh, from Hubbard's Lane. It's 0.7 miles oh, it's like a mile. Yeah. Uh, and so you walk down uh, uh, Payne Landing Road the old historic road which has an easement, we think at least to uh, the edge of the Payne Hollow property. And there's a trail off to the left that is a, a very steep trail that we now call Paul's Trail per our agreement with Mr. Hasselberger. And that takes you on down to the stream bank. And then you walk on down through the stream, by stream, and there's a steep hill that you have to climb back up. Uh, 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 to the house. The house is about 50 feet above the river. So we did our due diligence and, uh, you know, it's both the house and the studio are, are eight feet out of a 200-year floodplain. So Mr. Hubbard figured out where, you know, not only out of the 100-year floodplain, but it's out of the 200-year floodplain. Uh, uh, um, and so it's, um, the two houses are on the, uh, the upstream side of the property, uh, and it'll go on down. So originally he only bought six acres, and then he bought some more after that, and then the majority of it came from Anna Hubbard. Mm -hmm. So Anna had funds, and she bought the land on the, the downstream of that creek right there. Uh, uh, and so that's where the, uh, the ruins are, and so that goes on down. So she 
she bought the land, so it's adjacent to Preston Hollow. Or Pre Preston. So does it have a rock foundation? Yeah, 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 there's a, a off the, the land. Yeah, yeah, all that, and and there's still a ton of stone there, you know. Mm -hmm. The architects just, you know, as we try to do all of the steps, you know, because Mr. Yeah. Hubbard had some very nice stone steps built from the river, you know, because it's 50 feet up from the beach uh, up to the house, so he had some really nice stone steps, and those have all washed away and not been maintained. So there's a lot of rock there from the stream, so you know. Use what's at hand, I think was his words. Uh, uh, and so that's just another great service project down the road of once we, you know, even where the trail's supposed to go, you know, so that's is, another is the fireplace landscape needs deal, work? huh? Is the fireplace any work too? Uh, yeah, the fireplace, uh, the fireplace, and there's, uh, you know, and then there's the furnace down below. Okay. So he had a three story building there, right. uh, and the basement has uh, all the storage for their glass products and, you know, and all of their canning. Plus a yeah. wood burning furnace, right. uh, 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 and then he had a, a, a big uh, fireplace, stone fireplace, fireplace, with a cook stove next to it, and then there's another uh, wood stove in the back library, or in the back little bedroom area, uh, uh, and because they both had Murphy beds in it, so there were two Murphy beds, one in each room, uh, and but we have not started any fires in it. We've not, you know, and that's going to be finding somebody who is a, you know, a good chimney sweep to go in and make sure that it's halfway together. Were there any canned goods left? Uh, there <laughs> were uh, 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 a lot of canned goods left. Uh, I'd say two thirds of them were open and half used. So somebody was a, you know, a, a, a trespasser or a delinquent. Uh, uh, but we have no idea if they were Mr. Hubbard's. Now there are uh, several glass jars with canning stuff in it, uh, uh, but it's been 33 years, so uh, uh, no, no, that's, that's, that's a Jessica historian. question. Huh? Yeah, right. I said she's a historian. I know, I know. She wants to save it all. She wants to save it all. I, I, I think if we can find <laughs> some, the uh, well, if, you know, the uh, cans are uh, pickled yeah, beets, you know, good, from Mr. Yeah. Hubbard, we can sell them. They don't have a bubble on no. Pickle Beach will last forever because you'll be here walking like I'm I agree, away. I agree. We'll have to have you come down and do a good analysis <laughs> of, of, of the genres. Here, you try. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't be afraid to try beans. No, 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 no not, not, not this pickle. Yes, no, 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 I wouldn't be afraid. This is great beans or water. No, no not yet. Yeah. And so we are, we are going through that process now. Okay. Okay having it listed on the historic register, but part of that whole process is to have architectural diagrams of each one of the buildings right. and what we plan on yeah. doing with it and everything else, so, uh, uh, and even a survey. So we just met yesterday with uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Jim Purvis, I think. Uh, Piles. Huh? Jim Piles. Yeah, Jim Piles, uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so he's doing our survey for us, and so, you know, this, we're just a new, we're just sort of move on. Yes. Huh? Jeff Wilde is like God. He does it. He does it for everybody. I think so. No, he seems to know what he's talking about. Oh, he does. So he's here. Well, we, you know, and part of it is, you know, we have all the original deeds, and they really are, you know, they are the original deeds. You know, we have all the original deeds, and they really are, you know, not accurate. A mess. They're a mess. Go to this tree, you might sound like a mess. I was going to say, that's all the trouble. So, so it's a tree that's like three quarters of a skin from this and the tree down there. So if uh, people want to, you know, certainly put your name on down there. And if you've been in contact with Jessica, you can have the person there. That's, that's it. But, you know, would love to figure out how to uh, uh, do something. And maybe the with the library, we could figure out a time in the spring to do a walk on down there. Yeah. So where did the name Payne Hollow come from? Yeah. Well, you know, it's Payne's Landing Road, uh, uh, and so it's a historic name that is not associated with the Hubbard, so it's right. previous. Right. So I think Hilda probably could be a better answer, better person to answer that question. There was a family of Paynes back in the early days. There were 29 boat landings up and down, just to Trimble County from Oldham County on down to Carroll County and Payne. 
landing was one of the landings. Now the hollow part, I don't know where that came from. Maybe there's a hollow on the. Well, you know what? But, you know what? But it was Payne's Landing. There was Lee's Landing, like Wise's Landing. Lee's Landing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Houston Landing, um, different from Payne Landing, but they were all like just two or three miles apart. But what they did, they put uh, lights up, um, mm -hmm. kerosene lights, and they had a guy that would ride down the and light them to guide the barges down the Ohio mm -hmm. River, up and down yeah. the Ohio River. You know, Mr. Hubbard said it very clearly. States, you know, he, you know, he considered it to be abandoned property, and he thought it was abandoned uh, uh, because it was too small. So the landings right upstream and right downstream have access to big fields right there, whereas Payne Hollow really has enough room for a small garden. And, and so it was a hollow in between the two properties. It's a hollow between the two big, so, so just that one little stretch, and, and, and he's had and even said several times, it might not even be enough for two. Uh, <laughs> you know, because you're growing your own food, and you have goats and this and, and, and that. And maybe they accessed them. And, uh, and, uh, uh, but I think they accessed it mainly from the river. I, I, I think, you know, even though their mailbox was up at the top of the hill, uh, 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 I think they were more river people. But the barges would stop there, and they put up put out food and cattle, whatever they had, you know, for the people that lived up and down. Yeah, And then they would carry Well, you see, I would say, you know, when you use the term barges, I don't think barges ever stopped. Yeah, that might be, you know, I think, I think that well, the boats, I think the, steam boats. The traders' boats. Yeah, the traders' boats. So. Yeah. But, you know, like you get, you know, you sort of think of a big, you know, tug and pushing barges. Because yeah. you think of people no, that lived up and down there, they had to have the flour, and it was it was brought in by boat. I have a picture of Wise's Landing where the boat has come in to deliver the flour and sugar mm -hmm. and things, butter, whatever, sure. from came up from Louisville. Right. Yeah, and, and probably not yesterday. Jerry and I used to export the trades and our peaches. Yeah, that's, that's right. Well, that was Preston. That was Preston Absolutely. Plantation was peaches, right? Oh, it was every, it was the, whole every county. the whole county. The whole, the whole county. county. Yeah. yeah. We were one of the biggest exporters of peaches. Mm -hmm. It was called the, the peach. Uh, Industry of the world. Because More so than Georgia, huh? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. And now there's not any. Well, there is. But there's uh, I think cows are still have peaches. Few and far between. Yeah. Well, there's a peach ice cream right over here. And, uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> we, I, you know, we like that ice cream. I love that ice cream. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for your attention, and I'll be around for sitting and talking. Was you the Ohio the Riverway group, which you say you're a part of? Uh -huh. Did you guys do the canoeing trip down the river each year? Yeah. Uh huh. Did you stop at like BB? Did you yeah. put some signs up this year? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We put up. So we have uh, every uh, every public boat ramp from Portsmouth down to West Point. Sixty-seven of them. So we have a process where we're mapping that oil, working with the National Park Service, and uh, uh, they have hired this company that uh, took uh, 2.8 million photographs from Ashland to and stitched them together. So you can go online and go at three miles an hour, float down the river. And you'll see high definition, you know, photography, just like Google Streets, except for, for the Ohio River. Yeah. So they're doing it for the entire Lewis and Clark uh, uh, trail all the way out west. And so it's uh, it, uh, um, we call Terrain 360. If you want to type in Terrain 360 into there, uh, it's a fascinating deal. And then it's just really it's been in the past year. And then as you go into that. Uh, you know, all the Lewis and Clark stuff will pop up as you float on down the river. So it's just, uh, uh, and so, so this is, you know, they go all over the United States. Uh, uh, 
And so you can sort of see the Ohio River, they've gone down. So if you just click on any one of those, why don't you go to Trimble County right in there? And so, uh, and then you can click another button and it sort of goes on downstream. And so we're working very closely. Well, we pay for it. Uh, 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 and so what, what you really end up doing is you can do a content analysis of the shoreline to look at health of trees, to look at, you know, uh, uh, development projects. So as, like, say, like uh, 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 Madison is looking at creating, uh, they want, they want $1.3 million for a new campground. If you go to Madison, it's really a campground sort of on the upstream side. It's really for RVs and for, you know, they want to turn that into a campground with a, uh, a visiting docks, like transitory docks. So they use this to sort of go through and create the visual of what it would look like. Uh, uh, so it's not only historic, but it is, uh, it connects us up and down the river. So can you travel that like they do the maps through the highway? Yeah, so if you, uh, uh, one of those, see that little button up on the left hand side at the very top? Uh -huh. yeah, hit, hit, hit that. Yeah. Oh. So you could just follow the trail like, like that they did. Yeah, and, and, and so depending on how good this internet is here, you know, uh, or you can go on down and uh, click on different spots. See, it's only times one. Maybe make it times two. I'm just going to throw this out while we're not saying anything. So, uh, Hunter Consley is a, 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 a um, employee here at the library. You may know him. Jack Couch's grandson, just throwing that out. Is that Jack? He's kind of, yeah, he's kind of taking over the history part of it where I kind of wasn't an official, but I think it would be exciting for him to, to be able to uh, photograph, copy anything that you might have. And then I know, I know Hilda, the historical site, you make more than one copy, but once it's digitalized, you yeah. know, there you've got it. And we would have to house the actual thing. So we would love to be available for that. So you can call. I'm going to warn him ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just just throwing that out there, a local name that you would know. Okay. My so, boss said that he, his mom had a Harlan Hubbard painting. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's tons out there of people that we didn't know. Well, yeah. <laughs> well they say about 2,400 paintings have been documented by Mr. Hubbard. And they were all watercolors? Uh, no, oh. no, no, acrylic and... and I have uh, oil on wood. wood. So, hmm? I, it's either acrylic on wood or oil on wood mm -hmm. from him as a present. I don't know if it was for... That was some of the things yeah. that, you know, they... Yeah, and I'm sure there are people that have straight wood, wood cuts and yeah. paintings yeah. for labor. He used his wood cuts for book farms because yeah. they were sent out as Christmas cards and stuff like that. So I'm finding them in old books and things like that. Like this morning, I found the letter. I had no idea. So a lot of those, a lot of those wood pieces that create the woodcut are still there, uh, 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 and all the tools that he used to sort of carve it all out and all that. Yeah, sort of, I don't know. That would you know, have, uh, I, I would uh, die to see that. Yeah, so you know that whole process. Yeah, it's just neat, you know. Just, well, we but you have to think in reverse. You know, what a what a strange thing. You know, you sort of how can you think in reverse? Out a piece of wood like this. This must be just yeah. out there from trading. More talent. He's got too much stuff to learn. Know it. You know, one thing when you look at this, it, it's set to go at three miles an hour, so it's sort of <laughs> slow. <laughs> you know, it's a Lewis and Clark deal. Yeah, except for, you know, when you think about it, uh, the river is so much different than when Lewis and Clark oh, floated yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because you see a lot of eagles along the way. Yeah, and so we work very closely with the, you know, one of my fans is the Islands and the Ohio River National Wildlife Refuge. They own 22 islands from Pittsburgh on down to Maysville. Uh, uh, and so we're using this for looking at their islands. They have a neat little project, if anybody is a boater, uh, and they have, uh, if you visit each one of their 22 islands, you have to walk on the island during dawn to dusk, uh, and they have a little tag on the center of it, you know, with the name of the island. <coughs> and you take
take selfie there, and when you do all 22 of them, you get a nice little recognition from U.S. Fish and Wildlife that you're an island lover. Uh, uh, but you know, we want to have all the islands. Uh, there's 52 more islands, so. Uh, and they, and they dredged out a lot of them from what they used to be. Well, like you know, I you know, as I said, I we, we have a boathouse on downtown Louisville mm -hmm. uh, in the waterfront park, and there's an island right there called Toehead Island. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, that used to be 90 acres, now it's 9 acres, uh, and everybody says, oh, it's erosion. No, it's not the case at all. It's the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers increased the height of the McAlpin Locking Dam in the 60s uh, by 10 feet, and we call it and cause sea level rise. Uh, but, you know, if the same thing happened right there, you know, in Augusta, I have very good friends who are in Augusta, and Augusta used to have a 30 foot wide sand beach along the entire front of Augusta. Uh, uh, and now, if you've been up to Augusta, it's a concrete wall uh, where they can have their big boat go right there. But so Payne Hollow used to have a, uh, a, a 30 foot beach right there. Uh, uh, and so now it's lucky, like you know, I was there yesterday and it was maybe two foot wide. But well, it's like oh, built really. in its last two streets. Yeah, and so it's so it's a river. It's a you know, it's a big lake. You know, it, it's a big lake. But this is sort of a, you know, so it's a nice screensaver. You can just. So how do you restore that status? You take out the McAlpin locking dam. Okay. In the middle of the night, when nobody's looking. Well, you know there are. There, there are people, like on the Green River through Manatee National uh -huh. Park, they've taken out two <laughs> of the low head dams there. Those removal of the low head dams is totally different from right. removal, you know. Yeah, of a lot. Also makes it safer. Uh, it, 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 it would be, uh, you know, and, and so, you know, it, it's fascinating to go back and look at Mr. Hubbard's approach. You know, he, he did oh. not like uh, uh, the Army Corps and <laughs> He only really painted two, like this one back over here, this uh, original painting there, and, you know, paddle wheel steam. He's only painted two tugboats, diesel boats. Oh. Uh, one of them was by a lawsuit, so uh, they got hired, he got hired uh, uh, by a crew in Louisville. Uh, there's a, uh, a Doe Anderson, this PR firm down there, and still is. So the company wanted all the boats in the Ohio River. So he's been contract and got paid in advance to do this. And he didn't make one of a diesel boat. Uh, and the guy said, well, you want all the boats in the Ohio River? Uh, and so it happened to take all the boats. You know? Anyway, he painted uh, a nine boat. And they took him to court saying, uh, 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 you know, you promised you to have all the boats and you just, you know, your philosophical disagreement with diesel engines doesn't cut it. So he painted one of, of it and it is okay, you know, and I'm, I'm not even an art historian, and you can tell it, you know, it's a, just done. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, they sat in the corner of Doe Anderson's building downtown Louisville for about 30 years, and then Senator David Karam with Waterfront Park got a hold of them, and now they're in his, you know, that beautiful Waterfront Park headquarters in downtown Louisville of all these paintings that this company hired Mr. Hubbard to do, you know, so, you know, the idea that Mr. Hubbard was, you know, he, he yeah, he was a self-sufficient guy. He didn't believe in money, he'd rather do bartering. Yeah. But he had sources of income, you know. He, he, had, he wasn't poor. It was a, a, a lifestyle by choice, not necessarily because of poverty. Well, thanks. What a pleasure it was to talk and uh, <laughs> look forward to Working with everybody over the years to come up and fun. Thank you. Talk to Jessica.